Okay, now do you have a spare room or two in your house? If you do, you can make up to €14,000 in non-taxable rental income per annum by letting that space to students. Now this tax relief comes onto the Rent-A-Room scheme and was introduced with the aim of increasing the availability of rented residential accommodation including student-specific housing, also known as DIGS. Now this is a scheme that is currently being promoted and supported by a number of colleges, TCD, UCD and the property website daft.ie which has issued online incentives for people to consider giving up a room to rent for students. Well, to discuss the benefits of that scheme and the current shortage of supply, I'm joined now by John McCartney, Director of Research with Savills Ireland, Real Estate Advisory Firm and UCD Students Union President Katie Askoff. You're both very welcome along to the show this evening. John, first of all, let's look at the current climate. As it stands, it's that time of the year that everyone is looking out to see where am I going to be living next year? Where what, What's going to happen when college starts back and where will I find myself? How difficult is it for students and how likely is it that many won't find a place, an affordable place, come term time? Yeah, I think it is really, really difficult. Um, I mean, to put some numbers on it, there's currently about 220,000 uh, third level students in, in Ireland, according to the Department of, of Education. That's grown by about 25% in the last 10 years. Uh, The HEA did an analysis um, looking at the supply and demand of purpose-built student beds. They found that in 2014 uh, there was a demand for about 57,000 student beds. There were only about 31,000 to go round. And so the shortfall uh, there, that sort of shortfall of 26,000 people, has to be accommodated in the private rented sector, the mainstream private rented sector, and I think we all understand at this stage that that mainstream rental market is just so competitive and there's so little Mm. vacancy there. Not only that, but it's students as well that are looking for accommodation and if a landlord has a choice, he might prefer a young professional uh, couple rather than a student coming in um, armed with a bag of cans and (laughs) ready for a fun and party time for the year ahead. So they will be, they are likely to be discriminated against as well, aren't they? Well, Possibly, I think in the real world that is the way it shouldn't happen, but I think in the real world that is the way it goes. And of course, the other thing is that students are typically, you know, looking for a 36 week hitch, you know, to to coincide with the um, with the standard academic year, where, of course, landlords would probably Mm -hmm. prefer to be uh, letting uh, properties on a one year lease. Katie, have students already been in touch with you saying... What are we to do? They have indeed. We've had several students come knocking on our doors this week um, and they're just simply not able to find places to stay. At There's, this point? At this point, yes. Yeah. So that's why, and I know we're getting into this later, but that's why we're launching this campaign with daft.ie today in, in conjunction with Trinity Students' Union. Um, we're hoping to see up to 6,000 beds on the market because of this initiative. Um, and it's just one of many ways to tackle the absolutely massive and complex issue that is the accommodation crisis. Katie, can I ask you, what people are saying to you, what sort of offers have, I mean, have have they got an accommodation offer that even if it is extortionate in their eyes, that at least there's a place they can go? Or is it a case that they're not even going to get that? They're going to be queuing around the block in the sure. hope that they will get a one or two bed apartment for from, a good From what I've seen, it's a bit of a mix. There are people who are struggling to find a place in the first instance. Uh, and then for the people who do find a place to stay, the prices are out, out of the, out, off the roof, like they're just absolutely ridiculous. We're actually doing another campaign at the minute, uh, kind of an, an investigation, if you will. Uh, we're going to certain accommodation um, across Dublin and and just kind of assessing, I guess, the the quality of the accommodation. And some of it is quite shocking. Uh, things like the sink being uh, in the same room as as your bed, or the ceiling crumbling mm-hmm. down, um, and really, really outrageous things happening, like the the landlord asking for deposits up front in cash with no no contract signed. Uh, so throughout the year we'll also be focusing on tenants rights um, for students but for these two months we're about a month out from the, the CAO offers. Students are starting to look for accommodation now and that's why we're launching our partnership with DAF.E and Trin- Trinity Students Union today um, and that that initiative specifically is for getting more beds on the market because there's 120,000 empty nesters uh, approximately across Ireland so that's a lot of beds that are ava- available. They're there. They're just not being used. John, would you and your industry be all in favour of this? Because essentially it's sort of taking the, the landlord out, isn't it? 
Yes, well, I, I, I think what we're looking at really is in a crisis situation, more intensive use of the existing stock because we know uh, that the supply response, you know, the construction activity is lagging way behind the increase in, in, in demand for property. So in, in, in the short term, we're going to have to be resourceful and we're going to have to look at things like this. I mean, we're noticing that in the mainstream uh, rental market, we're seeing uh, an increase in the number of persons per average rented household. For 10 years between 2006 and the middle of last year, the number of persons per rented household remained absolutely static at about 2.7. And then in Q4, it went up to 2.8. In Q1 this year, it went up to 2.9. That's the highest number of people per rented household we've ever had. And what we're seeing is that in the past, you might have had a couple that would have rented a two-bed unit. Now they're saving 120 or 200 quid a month um, and going into the one-bed and foregoing that little bit of extra space. Okay. And who's going into the two-bed apartment? Two couples. Right. Clubbing Could, together. Th- there's, an, there's an opportunity there for a couple, say, in a two-bed apartment then to avail of this yeah, scheme, absolutely. arguably. Remind us how it works, John. Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, the, 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 the idea is that anybody uh, can get tax relief um, or, or can earn up to 14000 per year by renting a room tax-free. And so what, what we would like to do, and I think the idea of the proposal, is to utilise all of that un, un, underused space by encouraging people so in. So what is expected? Would the students expect to get? We've a text in here. Do you, ha- do you have to give them um, dinner or can you stick them in a shed at the end of the garden? Absolutely. That's a great question. And, and it really does depend on the homeowner. So um, something that we have, we have online several testimonials from home, homeowners and several from students. If you type in daft. Uh, students and home- homeowners, you can you can find them. Uh, but basically, it's up to the homeowner t- uh, to decide what kind of amenities they're going to provide. Are they going to provide dinner? Um, are they going to provide a study space? Are they going to request a quiet after 10 p.m.? That's really up to the homeowner to decide. Um, so it lends a lot of flexibility to the person letting out their home, which is lovely. And also for the students, there's a, a wide variety of different types of accommodation. And what sort of rate would you be looking at? Because we, I've heard of people who would rent out a room to language students, say, during the summer months. They don't get a whole lot of money for it. Is there a lot more scope for people who decide to rent out a room to actually really cash in when students come to stay with them? You mean regarding the students Well, what would less? students expect to pay? Would sure. they expect to pay less than they would do if they were renting um, accommodation that, that, that wasn't owner occupied that somebody wasn't sort of there sure I wouldn't say breathing down their neck but you know they might be looking at what time they're coming in at at night and they, they'll obviously be inspecting and making sure that their home isn't in any way uh, damaged or you know home life compromised by having someone else living under their roof absolutely I guess the idea of advertising the f- up to 14,000 euro tax free income for homeowners we would hope that would incentivize homeowners first of all to let out the spaces but also through natural competition that the price prices of uh, rooms in Dublin would decrease. As for a specific number, I don't have anything in mind. I think I know there's from 100 to 200 euro per week um, is is quite common, but we'd hope to see less and less as more beds become available. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's just such an important initiative to just utilise the beds that are empty and that can be uh, capitalised on in Dublin. John, do you think the tax benefits are there? You know, up to 14,000 euro you can you can earn. So, I mean, you could charge a student a thousand euro a month and not have to pay anything on it. Uh, do you think this is sufficient enticement for people? Well, it has been in place for a, a significant period and so far... It, What's it, the take-up like? Do we, have we any idea? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of the figures, Claire, mm. off, off, off the top of the head, but obviously... Uh, so far, it hasn't proved to be a game changer. Um, you know, there may be restrictions as well. I mean, about a quarter of uh, households in Dublin are currently renting privately. You know, some of them would, would, would well, they would all have to check their leases to ensure that they would be allowed mm-hmm. to sublet. And some, in some cases, they wouldn't be allowed to sublet by the terms of their lease. So it's not necessarily the case that anybody who would want to do it would necessarily be able to do it. And um, in terms of facilities also that they'll have to provide for a student, like we're talking, is there a study space or whatever, but there are basic things would they be around, like having ensuite bathroom facilities, that kind of thing, that their their own um, free common space are there, are there limits or are there things that a family would have to consider before taking a student under their roof? 
Well, of course, the, the general provisions in terms of the standards of rented accommodation have already come into place, and that's why we've seen, you know, about 5,000 of the bed sits um, being eradicated from existence. Or but not, what, according to what Katie is saying, students are coming to her saying, there's a sink next to my bed and a mm. toilet and everything else. So they're still out there, and aren't that's they? Being <laughs> yeah. That's being tamed. That's being so tamed. So you, tame. you, you, you've heard of worse scenarios. Indeed. Oh. Do you think this is going to potentially clear that up or just provide a bit of a temporary stopgap? Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, in a tight market, I think the reality is that uh, having uh, tenant rights is one thing, but as we know, enforcing those mm-hmm. is, is always difficult in a tight market because as a renter, you know, who wants to go and take on your landlord because the outcome could be that, you know, OK, you might win your argument, but it could be a Pyrrhic victory if you're out on the street. Yeah, would it be safe to say as well that the students who are potentially looking at this accommodation will be maybe first-year college students? I know traditionally when we were in college and when you went to digs, it was nearly when you were just leaving home for the first time. It was a bit of a big move, so you'd move into someone else's mommy's house and get your dinner and everything else. And, you know, maybe you wouldn't want, not want that autonomy, but you would be comfortable enough in a home home life scenario for a while. Yeah, sure. I think that's absolutely fair to say. And also on that, because I know some people might think that uh, that students have a tendency to, as you were saying, bag of cans and all the rest. Um, I and, was and, generalising there. Of course not. Bag <laughs> of books. That, bag of books. That's, <laughs> that's it. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to digs, what we've noticed is generally a very positive experience um, from both the people letting out their homes and the students using um, using those rooms. And if you think about it, it makes sense that students, because of it being such a so ridiculously difficult to get a room in in Dublin uh, as a student. Students are very gracious for the room that they do get. And when it's in digs, they are very likely to respect the rules mm. simply, uh, if not for any other reason, just to keep the room. Um, because Have we, Briefly, actually, yes. is there, and we know that the Airbnb and all of that has taken off. Have students been looking down that area in order to try and rent? Sure. Unfortunately, Airbnb does not benefit from the tax relief. So that's where there's really a significant difference when it comes to daft.ie, which is why we're partner- partnering with them specifically. Okay, so just briefly, people can go online and uh, go on to daft.ie, input their details and say, you know, I'm living wherever, I have a room, furnish photos as you would if you were renting anywhere else and, exactly. and push ahead with it. Exactly. And you can also outline uh, the different specific things like are you providing dinner or not? Are you going to be living in the shed or in a room? Um, all these different things. So it can really be quite uh, flexible, quite adaptable to each student's needs and likewise okay. the homeowner's needs as well. Okay, good stuff. Something something to look at now as, uh, as the college term approaches. John McCartney, Director of Research at Savills Ireland Real Estate Advisory Firm and UCD Student Union President Katie Askoff. Thanks for joining us. And-